2021 was filled with so many amazing deck releases and me being the person that I am, I didn't care. <laughs> Now, seriously, I don't consider myself a card collector, even though there's a shelf of cards behind me. Most of the decks that I purchase for myself are ones that I genuinely love, or they have some really cool, unique factor about them. And of course, if it's to support one of my friends in the card community, that's, that's always a nice thing. But that's about it, because I feel like I view cards more as a tool, so as a means of achieving card magic versus a deck of cards. You know what I'm saying? If not, don't worry, just keep that in mind. But now let me share with you my favorite decks of 2021. Also, these decks are in no particular order, so the stakes are not really being raised. It's just, it's all smooth, all smooth sailing, so. All right, so the first deck I'm gonna talk about is one that I've already reviewed on this channel. The company that released this deck hadn't released anything since 2017, so the buildup for this deck was just immense from their posts on Instagram to like the little hints they were dropping in their emails, it was, it was wild. But the deck itself had amazing geometric designs, beautiful accent colors, and it just, it had me sold. I bought so many. And if you haven't figured it out by now, these are the Virtuoso P1 playing cards. Now I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about this because I've already made a review video on it, but real quick, I do wanna talk about some stuff. The tuck case is really simplistic with its geometric shapes and it's black and white. Along with those four accent colors, I think that really pushed it over the edge for me because having everything one, one theme, black and white, and having those bonus colors, it just, it just really brings it out. It's amazing. And the cards themselves look really nice with that black and white design. Reminds me of the good old Verts playing cards. Then on the faces, you see a completely custom design, not only for the images, but for the suits as well. Each suit is associated with one of four colors, either red, blue, yellow, or green, and then also associated with a shape. These cards are designed mainly for cardistry, which I'm not really an expert in that area, but in my opinion, they handle fantastic. I would 100% use them all the time. And that's really all I'm gonna cover for this deck, but if you really wanna take a deeper look into it, I'll put the link to my review video on the screen that you can go ahead and check out. 2021 has literally been the year for hollow decks. Like everyone and their mothers were releasing hollow decks. Like, why? I remember buying my first hollow deck of the year. They were the hollow Fontaines. And then I saw another hollow deck and another one and another one and another one and another one. But there was one that I really fell in love with. And before I tell you what it is, let me give you a hint. 2021 was also the Dan and Dave collaboration year. They partnered with companies like uh, Dealer Script, Card Mafia, Anyone Worldwide, and so many more. Do you know what deck I'm talking about now? It's the Echo Smoke and Mirrors deck by Lotus in Hand in collaboration with Dan and Dave. I remember opening the deck thinking, you know, it's just gonna be another hollow deck but I don't know what happened. The second I held it in my hands, I was I was mesmerized. Their collaboration actually included two decks. One was a normal hollow and one was a dark hollow. It was this dark hollow that I had never seen before. And it just, ugh, it looks amazing. It's, it's beautiful. But before I show you that dark hollow, let's just take a look and admire this tuck case. Both the Dan and Dave and the Echo logo is on this tuck. On one side, it says smoke and mirrors. And on the other side, it says echo in an echoed way. Pretty neat. Honestly, if I didn't know any better, I would think this is like a slick piece of technology. Maybe even like a wireless charger. I could just put my phone on it and, and that would be it. Wait, hold on. I just had an idea. Wireless charging tuck case. Huh? If you see this idea anywhere else, you know you heard it here first. Right here. Okay, so let's pull these cards out. Oh, yes. Just look at it. Ugh. And yes, the faces are very basic and plain and literally the same across all the cards, but that's what I love. I love absolute minimalism. It works perfectly for card magic because no one comes up to me and asks, is that a magic deck? Minimalism solves all problems. Aside from the design of the deck, I really love how the Lotus in Hand cards handle. They're printed by Dex playing cards on their deck stock. Very original name. But the handling of these cards is so smooth. By far the greatest handling for any holo deck I've ever used. I believe these are available on the Dan and Dave website, so you can pick them up there. Maybe I'll have them in my card mechanic shop one day, but nobody knows the future. We'll see. Without a doubt, part of my top three for 2021. Before I talk about the last deck, I do have an honorable mention and full transparency, it's a deck I created, so I'm a little biased. But obviously, since I conceptualized it, defined the meaning behind it, designed it, went through the whole USPCC process for it, um, shipped everything out myself, like it's it's gonna be on this list, punk. You know, I feel like I'm really opening up in this video. I hope I don't get canceled. Quick recap, the Can of Supers playing cards are the first cards that I actually designed and produced. It roughly translates to meaning gray wolf and it's based off of three concepts, a wolf, a gemstone, and chess. 
The wolf was there to represent a part of me as I do love being alone most of the time, it gives me actual time to focus on things. And I'm pretty strongly opinionated when it comes to my thoughts. So I, I stand firm for what I believe in. That's, that's what it is. I won't back down. The gem, in this case, the amethyst, was actually used to represent my favorite color, which is purple. And it also represented a sense of calmness. So I really wanted to incorporate that with the deck as well. And lastly, I like playing chess. So, and therefore, based off of design in my dreams, the Canis Lupus deck was born. So anyway, I just can't say my child is not the most beautiful, so I had to include it on this list. But really guys, if you haven't picked it up yet, and yes, I'm talking to you, well, chances are I'm talking to you because chances. Go ahead and pick it up in the card mechanic shop. The link to it will be the first one in the description. The next deck is by one of the first people I looked up to when I started taking card magic more seriously. So many of the moves that I learned in the beginning were literally just by watching this man and trying my best to learn his technique just by watching the performances. Cause being a young lad, I didn't have money to buy content. So that's what I did. And while I was creating my deck of playing cards, I watched one of his YouTube videos talking about making your own playing cards and the mindset that goes behind it. So definitely he was a huge influence on that aspect as well. And that man is Daniel Madison. He really piqued my interest in cheating at cards. And as I got older and I refined my skills, I find myself more looking towards Richard Turner because his abilities are just, they're, they're inhuman. Like, I don't know how he does it. The key takeaway in all this is that you can learn a lot by observing the people you respect. I'm really getting off topic. I'm sure you guys know Daniel Madison has released tons of decks. A lot of them are very similar with just some changes in colors, changes in designs here and there. But these ones, these ones I loved, like, and they are the Madison Strangers. So as we go through this deck, I'll talk about some of my favorite features. Starting with the tuck case, you can see it's actually done upside down. So technically you open the cards from the bottom. I'm honestly impressed the cards didn't fall out. And as you all know, I love minimalism on the design. You can see Madison's logo and inside it, some pretty nifty artwork. So let's take a look at these cards now. Take a look at that bag design, completely borderless. And I really just love how the artwork and the logo are integrated together. Like, man, I love this so much. If you ever see anything like this in one of my future decks, you know, all credit to Daniel Madison right now. The deck also comes with two gaff cards and a duplicate nine of clubs, all perfect for card magic, the thing that I actually do. You know, there are so many decks that I went back and forth with that easily could have made this list. I just, I, I went with these three. I'm like, you know what? I'm going with it. Let's just do it. And I started filming and here we are. Anyway, let me know some of your favorite decks of 2021 down in the comments below because I'd love to check them out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I mean, just, just click the button. It's good for your soul. Good for your soul. Oh, please. I have no soul. Anyway, thanks for watching. You guys are awesome and I'll see you really soon.